Hey everybody, what's going on? This is Sam from Historic Travels and welcome to another video. Okay guys, so hey, in case you missed my last couple of videos, I mentioned that the reason I haven't been too active on YouTube as of late was just because I've been busy traveling for work. But hey, I'm home now and I thought what better way to celebrate my return to home and back to my studio and everything and back to working on YouTube again, but to do something that you guys love but makes my brain cells die. Yes, today we are going to be taking a look at another Brightside Titanic video. I happened to glance at their channel before I decided to film this and I saw that they uploaded another Titanic video and the thumbnail made me cringe just from looking at it. So I'm like, okay, I guess this will be a good video to do first after I got back home and everything. So anyway, all right, everybody. Well, hey, with the intro out of the way, let's now do another Brightside Titanic review video. <music> everybody so once again welcome back to my office this is the room where i've done all of my other bright side reaction videos if you have not seen any of those videos yet i will include a link to those videos in the description below so feel free to go and check out those videos and this is also the room where i edit most of my youtube videos and this is also the room where i occasionally just chill out and play video games with everyone i occasionally do let's play videos on my other youtube channel historic hangout if you haven't subscribed and checked out that channel yet i will include a link to that channel in the description below as well but okay guys, so hey, with all that out of the way, let's now get into checking out this bright side video. You should be able to see my screen right now. Okay, so this right here is the bright side video that we're gonna be taking a look at today. Scientists revealed biggest secret of the Titanic iceberg. Okay, so taking a look at this thumbnail, okay, this is just a first glance observation or analysis. It looks like they're talking about the whole thing where most of an iceberg is beneath the surface of the water. You can't see it from the deck of a ship. Now, if that was all it was, it really wouldn't be that big a deal. But there's something else going on here. Like, okay, it says new secret. And it's like they're pointing to something that's inside the iceberg. It's like there's a cavity or something right... Oh, shoot. There's like a cavity or something right here. And it's like they're hinting that there's something else inside the berg and that it's not just ice, I think. I mean, this is giving me some very major clickbait vibes. Um, I don't know, maybe Brightside's going to say the iceberg came from space or something. I don't know. But, okay, besides that, now let's take a look at the Titanic. Okay, so apparently the Titanic has red funnels again. Brightside loves to do that for whatever reason. So Titanic's a canard ship, apparently. And apparently Titanic missed the iceberg because the stern is facing it, and it encountered the iceberg during the daytime. Uh-huh. So, uh, to all of you Titanic historians out there, how many problems did you just notice me say about the real Titanic story just from analyzing the thumbnail? <laughs> <laughs> Let me know your count in the comments below. Okay, guys, so hey, I've got the video already ready to go here in another tab, so uh, let's get into it, I guess. <laughs> oh, boy. All right, here we go. Uh, there we go. A beam of electric light pierces the darkness over the calm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Please don't tell me they're about to say the Titanic was using a spotlight. Please don't tell me they're about to do that. The Titanic is quietly making its way through the waves. Its passengers asleep. When Apparently Titanic has a spotlight. <laughs> they haven't said it, but they're really giving off those vibes. <sighs> okay, okay, okay. And suddenly, a monstrous white shape is caught in the light beam. The faithful iceberg is about to rend. No. No, 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 no. Titanic did not have a giant spotlight on it to use to look for icebergs. That is a terrible idea. We're 19 seconds in. We're 19 seconds in and they're already like... <laughs> okay, so... I'm not going to go into all the reasons why that is a terrible idea on this video. I did make a real historic travels video talking about this subject. If you would like to watch it, I will include a link to that video in the description below. But no, the Titanic did not have a giant spotlight 
that they would use to look for icebergs and stuff. That is a terrible idea. That wouldn't have worked. It would have made the jobs of the lookout so much more difficult, maybe impossible. Uh, okay, okay, you know what? Let's just forget all this. And let's just rewind the video, start over, and I'm just going to contain my rage. 19 seconds in. Nine minute video. Ugh. Okay. Making its way, a beam of electric light pierces the darkness over the calm waters of the Atlantic Ocean. Well, at least they got that part right. The ocean was calm that night, so at least they got that right. The Titanic is quietly making its way through the waves, its passengers asleep. When suddenly, a monstrous white shape is caught in the light beam. The faithful iceberg is about to rend the side of the legendary ship. April 14, 1912. Only two days before someone will take a photo of a giant iceberg. What was that? Hold on, hold on, hold on. What was that? What was that? Is that a, that is a, that looks like a terrible CGI mock-up of a carnival ship. <laughs> really? Carnival Cruise Lines had ships in 1912, huh? <laughs> okay, I don't think they said this was Titanic, so whatever, but, uh, okay. Only two days before someone will take a photo of a giant like April 14th, 1912. Only two days before someone will take a photo of a giant iceberg with a pretty unusual elliptical shape. It turns out that this iceberg most likely formed out of snow that fell 100,000 years ago. Reese <gasps> Can we talk about how cheesy that mammoth is? <laughs> I mean, I get why they threw it in there because they said it's 100,000 years ago, but it just looks awful. <laughs> okay. Researchers used computer modeling to figure out its origin. They used data from 1912 and added some new information about winds and ocean currents. They concluded that the iceberg was probably a part of a small cluster of glaciers in southwest Greenland. These days, it's possible to calculate the roots of such icebergs in any given year in the past. So the infamous chunk of ice was on its way from Greenland to an area further south from Cornwall. Um, okay, so I might be wrong about this, but if you guys know better, then correct me. But the way I understand it, okay, the iceberg was taken south on the Labrador Current, okay? That's the very cold current waters that come from the north and bring the iceberg south. And the Titanic was in the warm waters of the Gulf Stream as it was crossing the Atlantic, and it only just entered the cold waters of the Labrador Current that same evening, the evening that it hit the iceberg. I didn't think the Labrador Current would take bergs in that direction. Maybe when they, the iceberg drifts into the Gulf Stream it could, but I'm, just, I'm not familiar with all the currents. I thought the Labrador Current would just keep, take the iceberg and have it keep going further south until it maybe got to the northern, like along the United States and stuff like that. Like not all the way west to the United States, but like it would just keep drifting south and then maybe it could start to go east once it hit waters further south. I don't know. I'm not an expert on the ocean currents, but this direct path that they're showing right here, this doesn't seem right to me. So anyway. If the ship had passed through that region only two days later, the iceberg would have moved far away from the point where they met. I mean, technically the berg would have kept drifting, but there's also the giant ice field that the Titanic was steaming towards. So um, are you going to talk about that? At first, the weight of the most well-known iceberg in the world was 75 million tons. With time, it started to slowly melt away. And when it sank the Titanic, its weight was only 1.5 million tons. <laughs> can we um, can we talk about what just happened there with that impact? Slowly melt away. And when it sank the Titanic, its weight was only 1.5 million tons. Okay, uh, so Titanic bounced off the berg and then just sank completely backwards, huh? Is that how it happened? <laughs> but whatever. By the time of the collision, it had probably been melting for months. 
but it was still a true monster. When the Titanic sank, the iceberg was 400 feet long, and more than 100 feet of its surface was above the water. I don't know if they have the exact dimensions of the berg. I don't think they do. I think that's just best guess based on, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming that they're guessing based on the photographs and stuff, but knowing Brightside, I don't know if they even looked up those numbers or any estimates. I'd say they just pulled those numbers out of thin air, but whatever. Some people believe it was a super moon that caused the Titanic to sink that night. No, it was a moonless night. All you have to do is Google the, like, <laughs> the moon cycles and stuff like that. You can easily look up the faces of the moon and everything for 1912. Uh, no moon. That was part of the reason why they had trouble seeing the cold water mirage and the haze. There was a rare lunar event. It Hold on, I'm, I'm going to rewind. And some people believe it was a super moon that caused the Titanic to sink. That night, there was a rare lunar event. It hadn't happened for 1,400 years. In normal conditions, the iceberg wouldn't have traveled so far south without melting and losing the largest part of its mass. But the super moon could have been the reason for an unusually high tide that pulled the iceberg away from the glacier way faster than usual. Huh? What? Okay, um... Uh... Where do I even begin with that? Uh... Okay, uh, so number one, I don't know if there was some, like... There was no moon on the night that the Titanic sank, okay? But what they're talking about here, was there some kind of weird lunar event back then? I don't know. I don't know. I've never heard of a lunar event that happens once every, what he say, 1400 something years. I've never heard of that. I mean, I know what super moons are, but like, huh? And I don't think a tide has anything to do with how quickly an iceberg drifts away after it breaks off of uh, Greenland and all that stuff. I don't think that has anything to do with it. And you're also, you're talking about the Atlantic in the middle of the Atlantic. I mean, even if that did happen, um, you're talking about something that happened months earlier. Th th that's one of those small, okay, maybe there was a high tide, but I don't think that, that wouldn't have affected. There were tons of icebergs. There were tons of icebergs. And that's one of those, that sounds like one of those big conspiracies. That just sounds like one of those big conspiracies. And that's one of those, okay, how could you possibly know that? Anyway. There's a specific type of bacteria that slowly consumes the remains of the Titanic. Salt corrosion, ocean currents, freezing temperatures, plus this rust-eating microorganism might consume the entire wreckage. I'm confused. Why did he jump from the moon to that? American actress Dorothy Gibson was aboard the Titanic. She survived, and when she arrived in New York, she started filming a movie called Saved from the Titanic almost right away. Yeah, that The thing... movie was released only a month after the Titanic sank. And in the movie, she even wore the same shoes and clothes she had during the actual disaster. I don't know if that's true. And I'm not even 100% certain if they named the right passenger. I, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but they did get the movie part right. The movie did come out around a month after the disaster, May 1912, I think. But, uh, eh. The movie was a big success at that time, but the only known copy was destroyed in a fire. That is true. 14 years before the Titanic sank, a novella called Futility had been published, and it seemed to have predicted the whole event. The plot centered around a fictional ship called the Titan. 14 years, 1898, 1912, okay. That sank during its voyage. Wait, what did they say the ship's name was? The plot centered around a fictional ship called the Titan that okay. sank during its voyage. That's not what the Titan looked like, but okay, whatever. The Titan was almost the same size as Titanic, and they both went to the bottom in April. The reason was hitting an iceberg, too. Okay. Both the real and fictional ships were described as unsinkable, and both of them had the leak. Titanic wasn't really described as unsinkable. Uh... Legally required number of lifeboats, which, as it turned out later, 
we're nowhere near enough. But you're not answering, you're not telling people why, you know? Back then, lifeboats weren't seen in the same way that we see them today. You know, back then, lifeboats were only seen as a means to ferry people from one damaged ship to another. They weren't seen as a means to try to completely evacuate a ship. You know, like, when you say all this stuff, you make it seem like people were just, like, careless or whatever. You know, and they just, like, oh, we just gotta stick to the law because it's an unsinkable ship. It's not gonna sink and blah, 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 blah. You're not talking about why people thought that way. If you're gonna tell history, tell it right and tell why people were making these decisions, you know, not just going off of, oh, she's unsinkable, she doesn't need lifeboats. It wasn't like that at all. Okay, so I'm kind of figuring out what this video is. It looks like this video is jumping around from a bunch of different topics, um, just not very well. It was really confusing, but whatever. We've seen it in the movie, but there were some real life love stories happening on the Titanic too. They're just, what the, <laughs> hang now on. Later, we're nowhere near enough. We've seen it in the movie, but there were some real-life love stories happening on the Titanic, too. Third <laughs> Did they just call the Queen Mary a Titanic? Did they just use a drone footage of the Queen Mary <laughs> and then go Titanic? <laughs> These videos are... Uh, uh, mm. There's something else. Okay, let's hear about these supposed love stories on the Titanic. Teen couples even took a trip on the Titanic as part of their honeymoon. One of the couples owned Macy's department store in New York. Once it became clear, the Titanic... <gasps> what? What? They did not just call Isidore and Ida Strauss teenagers. I, I, I don't know their exact age, but they were older. They did not. No. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. It's happening on the Titanic too. 13 couples even took a trip on the Titanic as part of their honeymoon. One of the couples owned Macy's department store in New York. Who the heck are they? Like, are they Titanic? That, that's not Isidore and Ida Strauss. Uh, uh, uh like, hang on. Um, uh, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh, hang on, I need to check. Uh, okay, you know what, forget it. Um, I'm not sure who these people are. Um, actually here, let's do this. Uh, teenage photos of Isidore and Ida Strauss. Let's see here. Uh, are there any teenage photos of them? Images? No. Uh, okay, so, <laughs> um, I think they just pulled that, uh, I think they just pulled that image up from somewhere. I don't think that has anything to do with Titanic. I've never seen it before. If it does have something to do with Titanic, let me know. Did they just... They, they called Isidore and Strauss. Oh, my gosh. Okay, hang on. I'm just gonna... 13 couples even took a trip on the Titanic as part of their honeymoon. One of the couples owned Macy's department store in New York. Once it became clear the Titanic was rapidly sinking, the woman refused to go into a lifeboat without her husband. But he didn't want to join her. Well, I also like it that the Titanic's lifeboats are inflatable rafts. Mm, okay. There were still women and children who he thought had to go first. Then his wife gave her coat to her maid. She insisted that the maid should get into the lifeboat, and she wanted her to be warned. I also love how rough the ocean is. You know, the ocean was perfectly smooth that night, right? As for the woman herself, she decided to stay with her husband till the end. Some people believe Titanic sank because of a mummy, not an iceberg. It all started around 1000 BCE. <laughs> is he about to go into the whole mummy's curse thing? <laughs> Um, I forget the whole story. It's been so long, but it's just, it's one of those rumors. Like, I think there was a passenger who said something that there was a mummy on board the Titanic when there wasn't. Uh, I haven't looked that up in so long, but that's just one of those ridiculous conspiracy, stupid stories. Um, anyway. With a mysterious woman who lived in Egypt in the city of Thebes. People knew little about her but they called her a priestess. 
Her mummy was put in a wooden sarcophagus and covered with a large lid with the image of her face and some mystical inscriptions. This place had been hidden until the first half of the 19th century what the heck is when a group of locals accidentally came across it. They disturbed her peace. No one knows how, but the mummy disappeared that day without a trace. A couple of decades later, a group of rich friends from England what is this? Egypt and found the empty mummy casket with the image of the priestess, whose dark eyes seemed to be looking into the void. They decided to buy it, but the buyer dis- Are we still talking about the Titanic? ...appeared the same night before he even got the case. All members of the group had some accidents. The casket changed its look. I can't. I- what? <laughs> Is that a car from 1912? Really? <laughs> like, what? What is the... ...location a couple of times until it, as some believe, ended up on the Titanic. It took more than 70 years... <sighs> for... Too many Christmas. Uh, sorry, there's nothing... There was no mummy on the Titanic. That was just some... I think it was a fictional author who was on board the Titanic and he was very eccentric. And I think what he was doing was he was talking. I'm not really comfortable talking about it. It's been so long since I've researched it, but I know I looked into it. I think it was like Titanic conspiracies or Titanic rumors or I know I talked about this, but it was a long, long time ago. Um, I'll see if I can find the video on it. If I find it, I'll put a link to it in the description below, but I know I've talked about this before. For a robot submarine to find them until it, as some believe, ended up on the Titanic. It took more than 70 years for a robot submarine to find the ruins of this legendary ship. The wreck lies nearly 13,000 feet under the surface of the Atlantic Ocean, split into two halves. Why did the liner break apart? No one knows exactly. Really? Titanic broke in two right around the area of the bridge, huh? And Titanic sank backwards? And no one knows why the ship broke? Um, you know, like, I mean, while we can't say with 100% certainty, we do have some pretty good educated guesses, you know? A lot of strain on the hull in a way that it wasn't meant to have strain on it. A pressure point right there it it's really and then there's also a testimony from um from charles jalkin saying he could hear steel beam snapping i mean it was strain on the structure strain on the structure in a way that the structure wasn't designed to hold strain you know or and i mean it was just anyway oh my gosh this is <clears throat> bravo bright side you've outdone yourself bravo some think it happened because of the water that got inside when the ship collided with the iceberg. The pressure was so... Wait, wait, wait. Hang on, hang on. Wait. Power break apart? No one knows exactly. Some think it happened because of the water that got inside when the ship collided with the iceberg. No kidding! Titanic hits the iceberg. Water's coming in. The ship is sinking. There's water in the front. No water in the back. The stern's rising up. The bow's going down. There's a strain on the hull. Huh. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the water that was coming inside the ship did have something to do with why the ship broke in two. Uh, what? Uh... The pressure was so powerful, it separated two parts of the vessel, starting with the ship's bottom structure. Others say it was because of the hull rivets. They had a high concentration of slag or smelting residue. And that's something that can cause the metal to split apart. The ship jipped. What? Uh, what? Uh, 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 uh. You know the Titanic was built like a battleship, right? And they've done tests on the rivets. The rivets were solid. You know, I mean, the steel and stuff used on Titanic is crude by modern day standards, but it was great for the time. And they've done experiments. I mean, the Titanic's hull and the rivets were, they were very strong. Titanic was built like a warship. It was just the breakup of the Titanic. It was, the structure of the ship was put on, into a situation that it was not built for. Of course it's going to fail. 
I mean, honestly, the ship held up very well, given the circumstances it was up against. Okay, hang on, I'm gonna rewind 10 seconds. Because of the hull rivets, they had a high concentration of slag or smelting residue. And that's something that can cause the metal to split apart. I don't know anything about that. If anybody knows anything about rivets and that, like, let me know. But I'm I'm calling that. That's a uh, my uh, that's a load of crap. Alarm is going off. So uh, maybe that stuff can allow metal to break in some circumstances. But I know for a fact the steel on Titanic was very strong. So uh, and the rivets were strong. So anyway, uh, let me know if you know anything about that in the comments below. The ship generally had many flaws, starting with the design. The watertight bulkheads weren't completely sealed on top. This allowed the water to flow between the compartments and, in the end, sink the... What the... <laughs> what? 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 The... That's... Okay, so do you guys not know how physics works? Water will not go higher inside of a ship than where the water is on the outside. And that was a design choice made so people have an easier time navigating through the ship. The Titanic could handle her first four watertight compartments breached fine. And the if the ship had its first four compartments breached, the ship's bow would not sink down low enough for the water to be able to spill over the tops of the bulkheads. That's why the bulkheads were open was because... The designers didn't think it was necessary to seal them up. And it would have been a, a whole lot of other stuff that you have to deal with if you did try to do that. But, like, it wasn't a design flaw. It was something that they thought of. And they're like, okay, with four compartments breached, you know, that's like the worst case scenario that they could think of. The water wouldn't be able to spill over the tops of the bulkheads. Bright side, look, I don't care what you guys say. You guys need to know something. The Titanic was a very well-built ship for the time period. And just... Do some research. Good. I don't think I've been this angry before. Like, anyway. Just. <sighs> it's weren't completely sealed on top. This allowed the water to flow between the compartments and, in the end, sink the vessel. The iron of the ship. Sink backwards, huh? Its rivets and steel of the hull ended up ruined because of high sulfur content, cold temperatures, and high speeds. Okay, the Titanic was only in the cold waters of the Labrador Current for a very short time before it hit the berg. And as I said earlier, the steel was very strong for the time period. Like, I mean... <sighs> the steel shattered and the rivets popped out quite easily. Because of this, Titanic sank 24 times... Do you have any idea the forces that were in the impact between the ship and the berg? You're talking about a massive ocean liner going at 21, 22 knots when it hit the berg. You're talking about a massive iceberg. I mean, the forces involved in that. That impact, if, any of, if a modern-day ship hit that berg, would sink any ship. I mean, and you're talking about a massive amount of damage from the front of the ship to after the first funnel. I mean... I get so sick of this. ...faster than it would have otherwise. Yeah, and it sank backwards. If the ship had hit the iceberg head-on instead of ramming it with its side, it would have probably stayed afloat. <sighs> okay, so that's a whole other discussion that... that the whole thing where if the Titanic hit the berg head on, would it have survived is a very highly debated topic. I'm of the opinion that it wouldn't survive due to how fast the ship was going. I think the Titanic would have suffered a massive structural failure. And I think it would have damaged so many watertight compartments that the water would have been able to flow in. And I think the ship would have still sank because of the speed and all the other forces required. But, I mean, that's a debated topic, so... But, ugh, gosh. I, <sighs> oh, and apparently Titanic landed at the bottom of the ocean upside down. How come the crew members didn't have binoculars? It would have surely helped them... No, it wouldn't! It was the middle of the night. I, uh, binoculars would not have helped. Like, maybe during the daytime, but at nighttime, no. Because it's pitch black out there, and the only way you can spot an iceberg is try to spot the outline of it against the horizon. 
you like if you're looking at a very black ocean and you're looking through binoculars you're just gonna see nothing but black i mean you're not gonna be able to see anything i mean it's just spot the iceberg on time and maybe even avoid the disaster but the binoculars on the titanic were locked in a storage cabinet only one crew member had the key and he had been transferred off the ship right before it set sail. I'm actually surprised I got that detail right. He later said he hadn't remembered to hand over. <laughs> so, uh, isn't that the same, uh, I think that's the same, um, stock footage face that they used when they, uh, were talking about Jack Thayer's drawing in my last Brightside video. Uh, <laughs> anyway. Over the key. But even without the binoculars, the ship might have had some time to change course and avoid the collision if the crew had gotten some warning. But that's the thing. Someone did warn them. About an hour before the incident, a ship that was relatively close... <laughs> really? <laughs> a modern day cruise ship tried to contact the Titanic. I mean, I know what they're about to talk about. They're about to talk about the Californian incident. And I'm sure that they're going to say it historically accurate. I'm sure they're going to go into all the details about what happened when the Californian tried to message the Titanic. But So apparently the Californian was a modern day cruise ship. Huh. Close to Titanic, the SS Californian sent a message to inform them it had stopped because of dense ice field. That is true. But the warning never got to the Titanic's captain. Some experts say it was because the radio operator didn't think it was that urgent. And later, the SS Californian said they didn't get a call for help from the Titanic because their radio operator was off duty. Some say the crew... Hmm. Um, I thought they were going to go into the whole shut up incident. I thought they were going to go into that. Um, but it looks like... So, um... I'm not an expert on all of the wireless messages that the Titanic received, you know, on the day of the collision. I know some of the ice warnings didn't make it to the bridge, but did the Californian message the Titanic? And was that one of the ice warnings that didn't make it to the bridge? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the Californian was one of those ships, but okay. They didn't go into the whole shut up thing. So whatever. I thought that, I thought that's for, I was certain that's what they were going to do, but okay, whatever. Titanic because their radio operator was off Hang duty. On. Hang on. I'm going to rewind for a second. It was because the radio operator didn't think it was that urgent. Wait, and later, what? What? Some ex hang on, hang on. Sorry, guys. I'm going to, I'm going to go right here. Incident. A ship that was relatively close to Titanic, the SS Californian, sent a message to inform them it had stopped because of dense ice field. But the warning never got to the Titanic's captain. Some experts say it was because the radio operator didn't think it was that urgent. <laughs> If that warning came in uh, sometime Sunday, which I'm assuming it did, um, then that would have been the time after the wireless system broke down and Jack Phillips and Harold Bride had their hands full trying to go through the backlog of messages. And it's possible they were just in such a hurry with all those other messages that the ice warning got lost in the fold. You know, I mean, they made a mistake if they didn't take that ice warning to the bridge, but explain what happened and why it happened don't just shrug it off like oh they didn't think the ice warning was important so they were just like whatever i mean no that's not that's not true at all i mean throughout the voyage they were fairly good at keep at sending all the ice warnings to the bridge you know i only think there was a couple that didn't make it to the bridge but uh too many christmas and later the ss californian said they didn't get a call for help from the titanic because their radio operator was off duty uh, so, um, Mike Brady over at Ocean Liner Designs, he watched my last video and he pointed out how awful the stock footage is for these. And I honestly never thought about it before, but after watching him talk about it, I can't not see it now. <laughs> and I, so, uh, this is supposed to be the, uh, is that, uh, wait, uh, let me get it. So this is the radio operator on the, uh, <laughs> on the Californian, huh? Uh, 
okay? <laughs> this stock footage just makes me laugh now. Was off duty. He was off Some duty, say though. The crew he was off duty. The radio operator in California was off duty, so. Who on the Titanic couldn't spot the iceberg on time because of an optical illusion? <gasps> Atmospheric conditions that night probably caused super refraction, which could have camouflaged the bird. After all, no one actually saw the iceberg until it was too close to the ship to somehow avoid the crash. They actually talked about the cold water mirage. Okay, well. Not even a whole minute passed between the moment they saw the iceberg and the collision. It was only 37 seconds. <laughs> okay, and um, Okay, <laughs> 37 seconds, okay. So, for those of you who don't know, we don't know for certain how much time there was between when the Titanic's crew saw the berg and impact. The 37 second thing came from tests done with the Titanic sister ship, the Olympic. They basically did some simulations, you know, and they wanted to see how quickly the Olympic could turn and everything, and then based on that, they tried to calculate, okay, based on this, this is probably how long the Titanic had. But we don't know for certain if it was 37 seconds. That's just the number that gets thrown around based on those Olympic trials. And uh, uh, this stock, this image of Titanic and the way it hit the berg, this is just making me die inside. <laughs> anyway. And it took Titanic two hours and 40 minutes to disappear below the ocean's waves. <sighs> okay. Thank God that's over. Okay, so final thoughts. What the heck? <laughs> I mean, like, I legit don't have words. Like, okay, so number one, that thumbnail implied that that entire video was just going to be about the iceberg, but it wasn't. It's like it jumped around to a bunch of different Titanic conspiracies slash what they thought were true stories. And it's just, that whole video is just like a, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think that was one of my worst rages to date. <laughs> Just like everything that they were talking about in the video, like the ship was built bad because of how the bulkheads were set up. Uh, Isidore and Ida Strauss being teenagers on the Titanic. I mean, and uh, it's it just, <sighs> I'm at a loss for words, okay? Like, I mean, sure, they got some details right, but most of what they said in there was just garbage and it completely like, Anyway, uh, in conclusion, do not watch Brightside. They are awful when it comes to their Titanic content. And when I was doing research, like when I was looking for the video and everything, when I was scrolling through the Brightside stuff, apparently they made some 45 minute Titanic documentary. I don't know what that's about, but honestly, that's terrifying. If they're this bad on a 12 minute video, what's a, or a nine minute video, what's a 45 minute documentary about Titanic from them gonna be like? I... Anyway, do yourself a favor. Don't watch Brightside and uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, guys, hey, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure you leave it a like. If you're new to the Historic Travels channel, be sure to subscribe. And thank you guys so much for tuning in. You all are awesome. And I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day, everybody. Thanks to our captain level Patreon supporter, Tammy Lee. Thank you so much for all the support.